What's up guys, I'm Vocal Strike, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution. Last time, we have defeated the first member of Team Ragnarok. And even before he could secret summon Thor, the Lord of the Aesir. This time, we are going to be taking on the second member of Team Ragnarok in Tricking the Trickster. Jack Atlas was able to defeat Dragon, but he was quickly dispatched by Team Ragnarok's next duelist, Broder. So Crow got his chance in the Grand Prix. Crow vs. Broder was next. Now, there is actually a lot of things to cover here. So I will do as much as I can. There were some things that happened even before and during the World Racing Grand Prix. Uh, Crow dueled an old man that was living practically in a junkyard of a house. And that's also when he he uh, used a junk deck, um, and they weren't using dual discs in that duel, believe it or not. Uh, they were actually using a dual arena, which was the first time we see a dual arena actually being used in the duels since the Grand Championships arc in Duel Monsters. But that is also the last time, as of right now, that we, uh, use a duel arena. Okay, so we got Blackwing Armor Master and Blackwing the Dragon. Uh, Blackwing the Dragon is Crow's Signer Dragon. It is a dark attribute, dragon type synchro effect monster that's level 8, but 2800 attack points and 1600 defense points. Requires one tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters. If you would take damage from a card effect, place one black feather counter on this card instead. This card loses 700 attack for each black feather counter on it. Once per turn, you can remove all black feather counters on this card. Then target one face-up monster your opponent controls. That target loses 700 attack points for each black feather counter you removed. And if it does inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack lost by this effect. So basically, whittle himself down uh, to basically kind of clip and cripple the opponent. But this is a double-edged sword that you can go a bit too far with this and have Blackwing Dragon become easily beatable by almost any monster. So be careful with that. Uh, but Crow in the manga has a dual dragon known as Black Feather Dark Rage Dragon, which is a dark attribute level A dragon type synchro effect monster with 2800 attack points and 1600 defense points. Requires one tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters to synchro sum. Once per turn, you can take when you take damage, you can set up to five cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard. And if any monsters were sent to the graveyard by this effect, this card gains 400 attack points. So you're basically top decking yourself, hoping to get as many monsters as possible uh, in order to make Black Feather Dark Rage Dragon stronger. But you also have to take damage yourself in order for this to work. Five, six. Ah, none of the secret seven. Uh, something that you should also, oops, not that one, that you should also keep in mind about Black Winged Dragon. Even though it has the words Black Winged, it is not considered a part of the Black Winged archetype. If you look closely at the card, you see that the names of Black Winged Dragon and the Black Winged Armor Master here are slightly different. The dragon's name has says winged with an ed at the end and has a dash between black and winged making it basically two words whereas in the case with black wing armor master 
Blackwing is all one word with no dash and no ED at the end. So officially, Black Wings and Black Winged Dragon are two separate cards. Black Winged Dragon is not officially part of the Black Wing archetype. Which honestly is a little bit stupid. I think. Uh, I think Black Winged Dragon should be part of the Black Wing archetype. Maybe in a future card errata they might fix this, but other than but it, at least in this game, this is not the case. Um, because of this, because of the name difference, the way the name is, like, sort of spelled and the way the name is written down is a bit different. Um, Black Weaned Dragon cannot be effect- cannot- is immune to all effects that target Black Wean monsters. So... For instance, if I have Black Weaned Dragon in my graveyard. Oh, no, 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 wrong button. God damn it. <sighs> but anyway, for instance, if I had Black Weaned Dragon in my graveyard and I summon Black Weaned Blizzard of Far North, which its ability is that when this card is special summon, I could target a level 4 or lower Blackwing monster in your graveyard. Well, for starters, Blackwing Dragon can't be targeted because it's not a level 4, it's a level 8. But, uh, but let's ignore the level 4 part for a second here. And let's also say for this example, for the sake of example, like just for the sake of example, that this card's effect only works on any Black Queen monster. I cannot choose Black Weaned Dragon because it doesn't say Black Wing the way that it's written. That it's written here on the card. So that kind of does put a little bit of a uh, like a bit of a wrench into the into the black wing archetype a bit yep and he has nordic ascendance so broder's uh azir card or nordic god card is loki lord of the azir which is Dark Attribute Level 10 Spellcaster Type Synchro Effect Monster with 3300 attack points and 3000 defense points. If um, requires one Nordic Alphar Tuner Monster and two or more non Tuner Monsters. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a spell or trap card during your battle phase, quick effect, you can negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. Once per turn during the end phase, if this phase of card you control was destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to your graveyard this turn. You can banish one Nordic Alphar Tuner monster from your graveyard and special summon this card. 
When summoned this way, you can target one trap card in your graveyard and add that target to your hand. So, honestly, these are really good effects. These are actually pretty good effects. You get a trap card back to your hand from your graveyard, which is something that most cards just don't do. There's no real easy way of doing it. Uh, you can negate the activations. One, you can negate a spell and trap card's activation once per turn. Um... Oh, does my field have to be empty of all black wings? So I guess we're not synchro summoning. Not that it matters, Black Wing Dragon doesn't have a summoning animation, unfortunately. Crow and Broder ended in a draw, eliminating them both. The final round came down to Yusei versus Haldor. And we got Loki. Tricking the trickster too. This is Destiny's moment. Now whom will she favor? The path walked by we with runes in our eyes, or the path walked by those bearing the mark of the Crimson Dragon. Yeah, you can kind of see that his eye is glowing there. The Nordic God cards, the Aesir cards, similar to the case with the Siner Dragons cannot be wielded by just anyone. You have to be chosen. And their mark, the Aesir God's mark, is the Rune Eyes. Do me a favor, Haldor. Leave Destiny out of this. It's just you and me and the cards we play. Nothing else matters. Now let's do this. Haldor. Haldor uses the Nordic Ascendant archetype, and his Aesir card is Odin, Father of the Aesir, which is light attribute, level 10, fairy type synchro effect monster with 4,000 attack points and 3,500 defense points. Requires one Nordic Ascendant tuner monster and two or more non-tuner monsters. Once per turn, you can make this card be unaffected by spell and trap effects until the end of this turn. Once per turn during the end phase, if this face up card you control was destroyed by your opponent's card and sent to the graveyard this turn, you can banish one Nordic Ascended Tuner from your graveyard and special summon this card. When summoned this way, you can draw one card. Uh. <laughs> Oh yeah, he has some, uh, I think some Nordic Beast and Nordic Ascendants mixed in here. Junk Warrior Formula Synchron, which is our first official Synchro Tuner monster. Stardust Dragon, Shooting Star Dragon, and Majestic, and Majestic Star Dragon. Shooting Star Dragon is Yusei's new Stardust Upgrade Synchro monster which he was able to get from a similar uh, stone card slab at some point in the store in the anime and was able to learn a technique called excel synchro from a mysterious uh turbo duelist and what an excel synchro is is that you're essentially using uh Kind of like the speed and whatnot to be able to synchro summon. However, it requires a synchro tuner monster uh, to perform. You have to be turbo dueling, and if you can pull it off, you can synchro summon even on your opponent's turn.
However, Excel Synchro does not officially exist. If you try to Synchro Summon on your opponent's turn, you are cheating and no one's gonna like you. So don't try it. Shooting Star Dragon is a Wind Attribute, level 10, Dragon type Synchro effect monster with 3300 attack points and 2500 defense points. Requires one Tuner Synchro monster and Stardust Dragon. Once per turn, you can activate the top 5 cards of your deck, shovel them back in. Also, this card's maximum number of attack per battle phase this turn equals the number of tuner monsters excavated. Once per turn, during either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated that would destroy a card or cards on the field, you can negate the effect and if you do destroy it. Once per turn, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can target the attacking monster, banish this card, and if you do, negate that attack. During the next end phase, special summon this card banished by this effect. So it can negate card effects. Uh, it takes a little bit to bring out as you do need to synchro summon two monsters, a tuner synchro monster and a stardust dragon. So it can negate card effects and dis it can negate card effects that would normally destroy a card or cards on the field. And it can also negate attacks. As as a result of banishing shooting star dragon, but you get it back the next turn. In the next end phase. So basically, it's an up, it's a real upgrade to Stardust Dragon. It just takes a little bit of work to get, to get it to come out. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, once per duel. Yeah, let's destroy the face down. And let's get rid of... Hobo Hedgehog. And get rid of the face down. Odin's Eye. Once per turn during each player's standby phase, you can target one Azir monster you control and negate its effects until the end of this turn. And if you do, look at all cards in your opponent's hand and all set cards they control. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this effect's activation. So it basically allows you to see what you're hiding. And I have really weak cards right now. But, um, back to some events that happened. Lazar uh, went into hiding by this point, afraid of Bring out junk wire. Sure, let's give it the 100. Uh, extra. Uh, 
uh, untapped points, because why not? And yeah, sure, let's see what we can get. Call the Haunted. At some, Lazar went into hiding, afraid of, you know, the antagonist that we met in the last episode. I can't quite remember their names. Their names I can never remember. But I do remember their team name. It is Team New World. Dark Hole. I didn't want it in attack mode. bring out Stardust Dragon if I wanted. Oh, which means I can actually get a stronger... A uh, Synchro Monster as a result. We're going to hiding, afraid of Team New World, and he also took his family with him. Despite him looking like, you know, an evil person, he's actually not. Away. Another cosmic compass. And sure, let's bring back Junk Warrior. Probably should have waited for Stardust Dragon, now that I think about it, but oh well. Unfortunately, Sheen Star Dragon does not have enough. does not have. a summoning animation either. Uh. Team 5Ds finds him. Uh. Team 5Ds finds Lazar to get some answers out of him about Team New World. He refuses to talk because he doesn't want he or his family to disappear. If you get what I mean. Oh, here comes a synchro summoning, and it's Odin, father of the Asia.
To a 500 or less attack from your graveyard. Target an attack position but negate its effects. Except for a synchro summon of a dragon monster. The other synchro materials cannot be level 4. <laughs> Maybe formula synchron since it has the more attack power out of all of them. Oh wait, no. Activation Star Dragon's effect. Tuning. Sonic Chick. Scrap Iron Scarecrow. Excavation means you get to look. Stardust Shaolong. One for one. You shuffle afterwards, and since none of them are synchro monsters, mm. he wants to get rid of Sheen Star Dragon as it is the more immediate threat. Uh, Crow and Lazar actually does duel uh, with Lazar being the winner. If Lazar won, then they let Lazar go and don't say a word of it to uh, Team New World. Oh, maximum number of attacks. I thought it was a power boost. dark hole um but lazar actually wins since crow through the duel monster to the hand okay then no he still takes the damage for you i'm stopping Thank you. 
There was also something I also needed to to talk about. The person that you say was dueling in the concentration duel that I did not mention last episode was the CEO of a major company that was working with Team New World. However, Uh, soon after that, Team New World made that CEO disappear. Um, and basically what a concentration duel is. is that uh, it's if you know the standard card game concentration then a concentration duel is basically a Yu-Gi-Oh version of concentration and what concentration is? Is that you basically take a standard uh, deck of cards, like the kind that you would Set and spread them out on like a table or uh, or the floor or something face down. You then take, then you you then flip over two cards at a time, like one card at a time. Uh, if you get a match between two cards, they are taken out of the spread out pile. If you don't, then you flip them back face down. It's basically a memory game. It's a memory match game, essentially. Basically, a concentration duel is that both players start with the standard amount of life points, at least for the anime, which is 4,000. And you and your opponent take turns flipping over a card. You spread out your entire main deck on the table or on the... You take turns flipping these cards over, and you basically declare before you flip them over if you are activating a if you are summoning a monster or activating a spell or trap card. And you can do this while on your opponent's turn. 
Synchro summoning, fusion, and fusion summoning, basically all of the extra deck summonings are the same as they would be in a normal duel. Uh, do not want to do that. And you win. by uh, by dro dropping your opponent's life points to zero. Still no way to summon Stardust Dragon. Boy, this is going to be a dragged out duel. I should have activated it. Yeah, I'll stop that one. And I'll stop that one. All oh, right, can't be targeted. take a lot of damage, but I do need Stardust Dragon back.
Oh, great. What was I talking about again? Uh, Crow also manages to duel a... Oh no, I was talking about concentration duels. Uh, if you actually call the card wrong that you're flipping... Uh, face up... Able to bring back Stardust Dragon too. Oh, that can actually get rid of one card. What effect is this? Remove from play this card in the graveyard to select one face of dragon type synchro monster you control. I should have done that to begin with. That was a misplay. We are both running out of cards really fast. Uh, but if you call it wrong... Uh, then you must set the mon then you must set that card face down. If you call it right and it's a monster, then that monster stays on the field. Other than that, everything else does remain the same. I can get Stardust Dragon back. Crow actually does do at some point the son of a clockmaker, and he's using a clock themed deck, so like Time Wizard. Mm 
I don't have the space for it. Oh, Stardust Phantom. Uh, I think I basically have all my Synchro Monsters uh, tucked away. What else happens? I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, Jack's uh how Jack gets his red Nova Dragon. In the dubbed anime, uh Jack basically pulls the red Nova Dragon out of nowhere. No one even knows where he got it from. But remember those group of episodes I said were subbed only mid-season?
Right now, she can start dragon to help defend it, since Scrap Iron Scarecrow is not reliable against Odin. Which didn't matter. Oh boy. Let's try that again. Yeah, because this is going to be a long duel, I may just do two duels. Uh, but... Let's also continue Red... The story about Red Nova Dragon. There was a... The other group of subbed episodes... Are... Uh, right, the sub episodes. Stay focused, Mason. The uh, basically, Gregor is played by a nightmare. I believe Jack was also played by this nightmare as well. That Jack was going to lose a duel and be engulfed in flames. Because of his uh, power style, like his power style of dueling, he duels. His, so they go. So you say Jack go visit Griger, and uh, at some point they do a turbo duel against. Gregor's little brother, because keep in mind, all of the uh, souls of the Dark Signers that were engulfed by the by the shadows, the souls that were taken by the earth by the shadows, as well as the Dark Signers, were all brought back at the end of that season. Were all brought back after the defeat of Rex Goodwin. And there's nothing worth bringing back. I did it again. I held down the circle button for too long again. Stardust Phantom? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, this is not good. Might as well, I guess. Let's go ahead and synchro summon formula synchron for its defense. Uh, now, Gregor's little brother was actually a big fan. actually wanted to try him out in a duel. And the thing is, the little brother is basically a rookie. He hasn't really won a real good duel, like hardly at all, except for maybe against his siblings who were probably going easy on him anyway. But when they dueled, um, unbeknownst to everyone in, who was watching everyone who was part of the duel, uh, Uh, the little brother was possessed. And the cards he used was... Uh, was basically cards that were specifically meant to cower, counter a, rather, a uh, power style. Uh... Power style of dueling, dueling style, which is what Jack specializes in. So Jack not only, uh, so Jack basically loses. After the duel, though, the kid has no memory of what happened. And the cards he used, he never owned to begin with, and they also disappeared. The cards he used, the card, when they had a look at his deck, they were completely different cards. Jack was human, obviously, so he leaves to the nearby town to kind of clear his head. At some point, he basically gets led to an underground area of the town. Which is where a very special Earthbound Immortal was sleeping. Uh oh. And I can't stop it. Um, that Earthbound Immortal, I believe, was called Red Nova. I could be misremembering. I can't stop him. I need to get rid of that card.
There was actually a, and this Earth Mandamora was never used by the Dark Signers because the Dark Signers themselves could not control its power. Even I can't stop it still. And Jack. However, there was a dis. However, there was a Signer years ago, with the help of the Crimson Dragon who actually sealed away the sealed away Red Nova and has been trying to find a way to get out. The imp, who was a servant of Red Nova, planned to use Jack as a sacrifice to bring back Red Nova. Oh, Haldor, you're really being a pain in the ass right now. Uh, Jack is not only an ancestor. Or not the not ancestor, descendant of this signer. But with the help of the Crimson Dragon, he takes Red Nova's power, combines it and purifies it with the power of the Crimson Dragon. And that's how he gets Red Nova Dragon. Now that that's all out of the way, if I also fail this attempt, that means I, uh, I will cut to a successful one. You don't mind if Quibble Hedger gets destroyed. I do mind if he has that. Ugh. 
double its original attack and defense until the end of this turn, but it cannot attack your opponent directly this turn. Okay. See if we can power up Junk Warrior as much as we can. Forty eight hundred. Ooh, and we can bring out Stardust Dragon. I can see why. We have formula synchron. Uh, actually, I think right now for what we have, it's good. Let's do Formula Synchron 
in defense mode, so we can use it for its defensive capability, then get plus one card. Nope, I am not getting rid of... I'm not getting rid of, uh... Actually, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait until... Shooting Star Dragon in the tap position and call the Haunted to bring back Stardust Dragon. We got one, so we can attack once. We can only attack once. Ah, oh, man. Oh, well. And I win. Finally! You say to be a Haldor, and Team 5D's moves on to the finals. Okay! So in the next episode, we will take on the first member of Team New World, as well as cover some other things from the anime. Thanks so much for watching, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye!